Alright, so hello everyone. So today we are going to look at the final part of your gas law, uh, not gas law, your chapter 4, right, which is about gas laws. Okay, uh, so first and foremost, uh, for gas laws, um, it's actually not that complicated, uh, considering the fact that we have experienced the what they call effect of gas loss in our very daily life. So, for example, is when you are pumping your what they call a uh, bicycle using a bicycle pump, or when you are uh, blowing a balloon. All right. So all these are actually uh, they actually involve all the gas loss that we are looking at right here. Okay. So basically, what we are studying right here is the effect of three different variables to the gases all right so the three variables that we are studying here are the pressure volume and also the temperature all right so uh this is the what they call uh, the relationship triangle that we normally use uh, or your teachers will normally use when they teach the gas laws okay so basically the idea is that when we are studying the relationship between any two variables the other variable must be set constant so let's say for example if we are studying the relationship between your pressure and volume all right temperature must be constant so if we are studying the relationship between uh, pressure and temperature so your volume here must be constant and if we are studying the relationship between uh, volume and temperature pressure is constant all right therefore resulting in three different types of gas laws that you are looking at right here all right balls charles and also the gay lussex law all right so basically all these three laws are studying the relationship between two variables okay so uh, we are going to look into each law all right uh, the relationship or the variables that they are studying okay Ball's law charles law and also gay lussex law all right so i'm going to look into your first one which is your Ball's law all right so Ball's law is actually studying the relationship between pressure and volume right towards your gas since it's a gas law right so if we are studying the relationship between uh, what we call pressure and volume okay pressure and volume meaning that my temperature here must be constant so if you see here my constant variable here is your temperature all right so i'm going to show you a simulation okay to see the effect of um, uh, what we call volume and also the air pressure all right your boss law Alright, so this is a simulation. Okay, so first we are going to study about Bohr's law. So it's about volume and pressure. So my temperature should be constant. So I am, uh, uh, I'm not going to what you call uh, adjust the temperature value here. I'm going to leave it as 325 Kelvin. Alright, I'm going to show you what happens when we increase or decrease the volume, and you will see how it affects the pressure. Now, first things first, pressure here is due to the collision of air molecules which you are looking at right here the red color balls bouncing off right so the collision of air molecules with the container here is what gives you the pressure all right so if the collision is faster your air pressure will be higher okay so you need to understand or remember the concept of air pressure it's due to the collision of air molecules and the container right here right so i'm going to adjust the volume and you will see what happens to the pressure so first we are going to uh, decrease the volume all right so as you decrease the volume right see we are going down right you will notice that the pressure is now going up okay it's increasing as volume decreases pressure is increasing and the reason why is because if you notice the what they call simulation right here right i'm sure you can notice that now the air molecules they are bouncing off or they are colliding with the container faster right so as they are colliding more fast the air pressure increases so let's decrease some more let's further reduce it all right so let's further reduce the volume as you can see now the air molecules are bouncing or colliding even faster right therefore the pressure increases okay so let us increase back the volume so when you increase back the volume you see the air molecules are colliding slower therefore your air pressure decreases okay so this is the first law which is your Ball's law okay when volume decreases pressure increases all right so as you can see from the simulation just now as your volume increase right your pressure will 
slowly decrease therefore the graph here okay so if you look at the definition and it's also correct right so if you see here the definition is give, uh, given here is inversely proportional to volume pressure is inversely proportional to volume when the temperature is constant meaning when volume decreases pressure will increase okay so this is Ball's law all right the effect of volume and air pressure okay so now we are going to look at the second law all right which is your Charles law right Charles law is basically studying the relationship between volume and temperature all right so we are going to look at this simulation once again all right if I'm studying the relationship between uh, what you call uh, volume and temperature all right my uh, what you call air pressure here should be set as constant okay meaning I'm not going to adjust my uh, what you call uh, air pressure okay so I'm going to just reduce this to bottom first okay I'm going to set my uh, what they call air pressure here and I am going to increase my temperature so as you can see right when the temperature increases the collision happens faster right since the air molecules uh, gain what they call heat energy therefore their kinetic energy increases so the collision happens faster right so as you can see when the collision happens faster the air molecules will push the piston up all right therefore uh -huh. so we are going to do this once again i'm going to cool the temperature and you see what happens to the volume all right so when temperature increases your volume is also increasing so when temperature decreases your volume decreases all right so this is the relationship between uh, temperature and volume this is what uh, charles law is trying to tell you all right that when your temperature increases right your volume is also increasing all right so it's directly proportional okay so uh, if you look at the definition here right uh, there is one keyword that i need to stress which is this one okay the temperature that we are using for gas law is uh, kelvin all right so when we talk about absolute temperature meaning we are referring to zero kelvin okay so in Charles law, when we are studying the relationship between volume and temperature, your pressure must be constant. And the temperature is at absolute temperature, meaning we are looking at zero Kelvin. Lah. All right. So your graph will be like this, lah, directly proportional. Okay. So that one is Charles law. All right. So finally will be your Gay-Lussac's law. So Gay-Lussac's law, or uh, previously what we learned is called as pressure law. All right is studying the effect or the relationship between pressure and also your temperature okay so we are going to look at what would happen when we constant the volume all right volume is constant so now we are looking at the effect between your pressure uh, pressure and also your temperature all right so when you heat right as you can see your pressure increases all right so when you cool down right you can also notice that your pressure decreases okay so it's basically based on the what you call a uh, collision of the uh, air particles right because when you heat air particles they gain energy so they collide faster as you can see here right so when they collide faster the air pressure increases okay and then when you cool down right the air particles move slower therefore your pressure is also decreasing okay so that is the relationship in your gay rusex law all right so basically when your uh, temperature increases your pressure is also increasing all right so it's directly proportional and then again absolute temperature meaning zero kelvin all right so for uh, later on when we do the calculation right uh, the temperature normally we use in kelvin you need to convert into kelvin for your calculations okay but that is the three different types of gas law right so basically what you're learning is the relationship between variables at different conditions okay Ball's law is talking about pressure and volume Charles law is about volume and temperature gay lussex is about pressure and temperature all right and then of course uh, you need to know uh, which variables are constant if we talk about let's say Charles law 
all right if you uh, still remember your triangle here all right so charles law volume and temperature right so pressure must be constant which is this one here okay so that is your three different types of gas laws all right so i'm going to show you uh the formula that we are using for your calculation okay which is this tree here all right so this is the formula for your Boyle's law all right and then this one is the formula for your charles law and your gay lussac law all right so basically for all calculation we are going to use these three formulas okay depending on the type of questions all right so i'm going to show you uh, three different examples of how we apply the formula right here okay so your job as a student right is to actually identify the question whether uh, it's talking about which gas law all right so um, you will be able to identify just by looking at the question you need to know it's about uh, which two variables remember we only have three pressure volume and temperature all right so let's look at the first question here okay uh bicycle pump has a length of 30 centimeters and then uh air pressure what is the pressure of the air so here if you look at the question right this one length of 30 centimeters this is referring to the volume whereas this sentence here what is the pressure obviously it's asking you about pressure right okay so this is talking about pressure and volume therefore this is Boyle's law all right so if I know it's Boyle's law means I need to apply the Boyle's law formula which is this one P1 multiplied to V1 is equals to this one okay now here although uh, what you call the formula is given in volume right but we can actually substitute the value of your length straight away meaning we are using the length as volume right you don't need to calculate the volume here okay so i'm just going to write down uh whatever variables that i have okay so here atmospheric pressure okay you need to know the value of atmospheric pressure all right so if i am using let's say uh, pascal meaning this is the value of my atmospheric pressure all right remember you have two different uh you have three different what you call uh, units of pressure you have pascal and then you have uh, centimeter mercury okay this is the unit for another uh, air pressure okay this is atmospheric pressure all right so let us assume that i'm using pascal okay so this is the value of my uh, pressure here so i'm just going to write down one what value what, what variable is given here lah. so my p1 is my atmospheric pressure which is this one okay pascal okay and then my volume one so volume one is this one right i'm going to use this straight away we don't need to calculate the volume okay pressure two okay this is what i don't know all right so push inwards at the distance of 12 centimeter all right so my v2 here okay the volume that i want is the one that is the bottom part here all right so this is where your air molecules are not on the top one all right this is where all your air molecules will be all right so uh i need to minus off original is 30 centimeters right i'm going to minus off 12 because i only want to know the length of this part here okay so this is 18 centimeters right okay and then we are going to substitute into the formula here to calculate okay so basically it's actually very uh what we call it's a very simple calculation you only need to know which law you are trying to use all right so and then you can just calculate your value right here and then you will get your answer okay so this is Boyle's law all right so i'm going to show you another one okay so let's look at the second question all right uh, contains gas at the temperature of 95 degrees celsius okay so they give me temperature and also pressure all right so okay. this is talking about pressure and temperature if it's pressure and temperature meaning that this is the lussac's law all right so we are going to apply the gay lussac's formula which is P 
over T1 equals to pressure 2 divided by temperature 2. Okay, so my pressure 1 here is equivalent to this one, right? 152 kilopascal. Alright, temperature 2, uh, temperature 1, sorry. Okay, this is 95 degrees Celsius, right? Now, for calculation purposes, our temperature we need to convert to Kelvin. So how do we convert to Kelvin? Alright, so this is the, uh, we need to remember this. Huh? If I want to change from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, I need to add 273. If I am going the other way around, I need to minus. Okay, because zero Kelvin, uh, sorry, zero Kelvin is equivalent to negative 223 degree Celsius. Alright, so if they give you degree Celsius, you need to convert to Kelvin. So you need to add 273. So this is 95, right? When you add 273, you are going to get 6, uh, sorry, 3, 6, 8 Kelvin. Okay, and then let's look at your P2. P2 is what I don't have. I don't know this. Alright, and then my second temperature is rises by 24 degrees Celsius. So I need to know what is my final temperature. Okay, so 95 added by uh, 24 is uh, 119, right? So 119, 119 add to 273. Okay, oh my god, math. Come on, I'm doing maths here. Okay, so it's 392, right? So your value here is 392 Kelvin. Okay, so that is how you should uh, calculate your temperature value. You need to remember to change to Kelvin, right? So you just substitute into the formula and then you just calculate for your P2. Okay, right? So it's actually very simple, right? You only need to know which formula you need to apply. Okay, now let's look at the third question here. All right, so I need to know which law I need to use. So let's look what they give me first. They give me volume. Okay. All right, the gas is heated at fixed pressure. All right, so this is uh, what they call relationship between I have volume and temperature. Okay, <clears throat> right, so this is Charles' law. Okay, All right, because they asked me to calculate, calculate the final temperature, so I know this is the relationship. Okay, between volume and temperature, All right? So Charles Law's formula is this, okay? V1 divided by T1, okay? It's actually similar to your gay lussacs Law. We just change the top part, All right? We change the pressure to volume, All right? So in this case, since it already gives me the volume, so I just use the volume, All right? 5 ml at 27 degrees Celsius. So I need to change this to Kelvin. Alright, so this one will be 300 Kelvin. Okay, and then my second volume, alright, becomes 6. So this is my second volume. Alright, my T2 is what I don't know. Okay, so you just substitute this into the formula to calculate for your T2. Alright. So after you calculate for your T2, right, you will be able to get your answer in Kelvin. So let's say, for example, after you calculate, right, uh, you get your answer in Kelvin, right? But since they want the final temperature, right, if here is in degrees Celsius, meaning this, you need to change to degrees Celsius. So how do we change? So let's say I put an unknown here, uh, put X Kelvin, alright? So how can I change is you take X, alright, you minus remember kelvin if i want to change back to degree celsius i need to minus all right minus 273 this one your answer you will get in degree celsius okay so that is how you calculate all right for gas loss okay very simple you only need to be able to identify uh it's talking about which law so you need to look at the question 
okay, okay, whether it's about Charles Law or Gay Reflex Law, right? So, uh, that is why we teach you the what they call uh, triangle relationship here. Okay, so uh, this can help you to remember the formula actually. Alright, so if we look at the question, and the question is talking about uh, pressure and volume, right? So if you see here, this one is about pressure and volume, right? So we know this one is constant. Lah. So this is P multiplied V, right? That is why my formula, I get P1, A1, P2, V2 like this. Alright, so let's say with this that right now I am studying about uh, what you call uh, volume and temperature, Charles law, meaning this is constant, right? So if constant, you just uh, close this. So it's D over T, right? That's why you get this formula. D1, T1 equals to V2 over T2. And then if you're studying about pressure and temperature, you close this. So it's P divided by T. That is why you get this formula. All right. So that's it. Okay. Uh, it's very easy. You don't really need to memorize the formula. Lah. As long as you can remember this triangle, I think it should be easier for you all. All right. So that is your uh, gas loss. Okay. The three different gas loss. All right. How to calculate. It's important for you to know how to calculate. All right. Especially in objective. Okay. So application wise, of course, they will ask a lot about applications. All right. Since uh, gas loss, uh, you will see this in your daily life. All right, so you need to know a few examples, right? Uh, which example is referring to which law? Okay, so again, it depends on the uh, uh, factors that we are looking at. All right, okay, so uh, that is it for today. All right, I hope this one can help you to understand better lah, about gas law. All right, it's very direct, very simple. Don't complicate it too much. Okay, all right, see you next time. Bye bye.